Hey everyone, just coming online, making sure that the audio is working this time. We're trying to make some adjustments to our live and I wanna make sure that everyone can hear me before I click over into the main view and then we will get started. All right. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski and welcome to another installment of 10 Minute Design Chats for Crafty People. If this is the first time you've ever caught me live, welcome. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm really glad to have you here. And hopefully we're gonna iron out some of the audio bugs that I have had in past installments. So, seeing people pop in, I would love to know in the comments, where are you watching from? Let me know, and if you're catching this on replay, do the same thing. Tell me where you're tuning in from, and of course, tell me maybe what's in your mug or your drinking implement. All right, so today is the first time we're gonna talk about color theory. And this is a really big topic, and I'm not, I'm not gonna cover everything about it today. We're gonna zero in on one little area, okay? One little area at a time, because I think you know, we've got 10 minutes, right? And I am gonna set the timer as soon as we go down to the, uh, you know, the tabletop. But we're gonna take it in chunks and I'm gonna show you some scrapbook pages and some cards and hopefully it'll get your creative juices flowing and your thoughts about color. So that is what our plan is. All right, wanna mention a couple things before we get started. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you. So hit that subscribe button. And then if you want to get notified the next time I go live, make sure you hit the gray bell as well. Then you will get a notification anytime I go live or have a new video on YouTube. So there's that, okay? And if you are new to these chats, here, here's how we're gonna handle it. We take a topic and we talk about it. And some of the things that you're gonna see from chat to chat will overlap and I'll bring in things I've showed you before because one thing I want to stress is design theory, design, education, nothing happens in a vacuum, right? There's always something happening with another thing that's happening and another thing that's happening. It's very layered. It's like an onion. Design is an onion. Okay. So we're going to get started here and I am seeing that the comments are coming through. I'm assuming, I'm assuming you can hear me. So let's take a drink of coffee or whatever you have and take a deep breath. I always get very nervous. All right. Mmm. Fantastic. All right. Are we ready to go down to the table? And here's, a, here's the thing too. I'm going to have all at the end, if you have any questions for me, we're going to pop them up on the screen. It'll be really great. And, uh, but, but once we start the timer, I'm going to focus in on what I need to talk about. So I won't be looking as much at the comments because for me, they are very shiny and they, they distract me. I can't, I can't even think when I start to see comments, like I'm looking over here at Nanette's comment and I want, I want to respond but I need to stay focused. Okay, all right. Sipping on plain water in Cincinnati, that sounds great. Now, let's go to the table view, shall we? All right. Now, friends, I'm, I'm starting out here with a couple color wheels. I actually just purchased these um, because I didn't have a current color wheel. And we are not gonna get into the nitty gritty of this thing, okay? With the exception of, I'm gonna move that one out of the way because I don't like that one as much. I'm gonna get this out of the way. With the exception of this little guy here, because the thing that we're going to talk about today is an aspect of color theory called analogous color, analogous color. Now let me see if I can actually get, well, I had the term analogous color. <laughs> And now it's not on my screen. You're going to have to trust me on this one, but we're going to do analogous color. What does that mean? Let's start the timer and then we can get into it. All right. Well, actually, I'm not going to start the timer yet. Okay. Um, analogous color. It simply is defined as this. Three colors that sit next to each other on a color wheel. So it's part of a rainbow, right? Part of a rainbow, part of a rainbow. Now, if you create things with rainbow color, you, you've done this before, right? You know exactly how a rainbow goes. We say Roy G. Biv all the time, right? 
But analogous is limiting it a little bit so that you don't focus on as many colors. Does that make sense? Oh, hey, I see Simon Hurley popping in. Hey, young lad. All right, so what I wanna try to do here is I'm gonna try to lock the color on our screen. Hold with me, lock it. Okay, I don't want a lot of color shifts. Can't guarantee that that's not gonna happen. Hey, Sydney's here. All right, we're gonna move on to the timer and the first thing, because analogous color these colors that sit next to each other, they create limits, limits. And I find that if you have a limit when you are setting out to design, you won't feel as overwhelmed. Does that make sense? Because I know how overwhelming it is when you get all these pattern papers and you sit down and you're like, what do I do next? Well, let me show you some pattern paper, shall we? All right, I'm gonna bring these in. For example, let's, let's take a look at our color wheel. These are three disparate, well not disparate, these are three disparate lines. These do not come from the same collection, but this is what we would call an analogous color palette. We have yellow, we have green, and we have blue. If I were to use these pattern papers on any project, they'd probably look pretty good together. And there's a reason, because of where they are on the rainbow. So that's the basics, right? Let's get started with the timer and we're jumping in. I hope I haven't forgotten anything, but there's just, there are just so many things. All right, the timer is starting now. And I just wanna clear up real quick. You guys can hear me, no problem. Like, is it a better audio this week? I, I adjusted the mic and I have it a little bit closer to my mouth. So, so there's that. All right, bring it in the first layout and the timer begins now. Now, the reason we're starting right here, oh, it's so easy, monochromatic. Right, if you're sticking with one color, you don't have to worry. You know what I'm saying? I do a lot of monochromatic pages, a ton of them. Why? Because color isn't my favorite topic. It really isn't. And I know that might seem a little strange, but I'm totally serious with you. Um, color overwhelms me. So when you do monochromatic, you're golden, all right? But now let's get into some layouts that feature this analogous color scheme. So this is an old page that I did. Oh gosh, I think I did this as an assignment for Stacy Julian. And if you can kind of see here, we are working on this analogous color. We've got the greens and the blues. Now, when I bring in a brown to any color scheme that I'm creating, you can always mix in a neutral. Neutral, no problem. I consider brown a neutral. I consider tan a neutral. I consider white a neutral. And I consider, what's the other one? White, black a neutral as well when you are designing things. So you see how this works, right? Simply repeating some of this analogous color. Easy peasy breezy. Let's get another one in here. These are, oh my goodness. Okay, this is an old layout, friends. And if you have seen this, you've been with me a long time. And in fact, I gotta point this out. Look at what happened over the years to that little um, clear thing turned yellow. It nah, doesn't strike me as very acid free to me, but I digress. Again, we are looking at an, an mostly analogous. I don't have three colors here, but I have green, green into blue, right? So simple. Now, one of the things that I do a lot when I'm scrapbooking, and I have been doing this since the beginning of time, as you're going to see on literally every sample I'm showing you, um, I go with black and white photos. Why? because then it removes me having to make decisions about color that I don't want to make. If I make my photos black and white, then I can take a simple analogous, this one stretches a little more, right? This one, we're going orange into yellow and green. So that's a little more rainbow, but I pulled it still to show you that progression of color, all right? Let's do another layout. Oh my goodness, do you know I used to have a dog? Oh, shh. Look at her. Again, we're going with the analogous scheme. All right, orange, and now we're skipping over to green and going into blue. But you can kind of see, right? We are, when you're sticking with one side of the color wheel, let's, let's, let's go like that. Let, well, let's get my hair out of the way. Actually, let's turn this color wheel. It's supposed to turn like, like that. Well, okay, you get the idea. If you look at half of it, you can see you're working with this analogous color. This one's stretching it a little. And this last one that I'm gonna show you real quick, and yes, that dog was cute. Oh, Dylan was her name. Here, we're going more in a warmer tone with sort of the reds and the orange tones of this pattern paper. 
and then I brought in this sort of yellow. But that is analogous too. This was all based on my friend Tara's, uh, on her sweatshirt. Exciting, right? All right, where are we at with time? We have, okay, six minutes. We're gonna move into cards. Cause speaking of warm, this is where I like to focus in and actually bear with me for a minute. Instead of panning, I'm actually just gonna bring my camera down because I want this to be crispier, okay? Can you hold that right there, Kathy? Good job. All right, sorry for the vibrations. We're gonna leave, oh, that's much better. Uh, on the live last week, I felt that my, my zoom in was a little less crispy. So that's gonna look better. But you can see this warm analogous blend. We have pink going into orange, going into yellow. So anytime that you pick three colors on the color wheel, you can kind of guarantee that it's going to look good together, right? You don't have to worry about, you know, going across the color wheel and is this gonna work with this? We're gonna talk about that in future installments, but today, not so much. Now here's a card project that I did for Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. And again, we are looking at analogous color. So we got the orange, we got the, wait, we got the pink, right? And we're moving up into a bolder pink and then into orange. Three colors blending together. Now, yes, there is green thrown in there, right? That's okay. It's an accent color with the core of this being analogous color. Ah, oh, love it. All right, I'm gonna bring in my little, my little woot card. And for, for all of you folks that don't live in the US, I've had a couple people send me messages and say, what does woot mean? I, I can best describe it by just doing this. Woot, does that make sense? Okay, it's, it's a celebratory term. Again, we are working analogously. It's the pink reds, right? Into the oranges and into the yellows. So it's, it's a really simple formula for color. And you know, like I said, it is going to work. Let's bring in another card project here. And also once this video has posted to my YouTube, I'll add links below for any of these cards or layouts that have corresponding videos or blog posts. I don't think any of the layouts I shared uh, because they're so old, <laughs> they're just so old. I don't think there's any video content or posts for that, but cards, definitely. So now here's an example of looking at my pattern paper and the pattern paper, basically, let's, let's see if we can turn it here. This is more of a rainbow, right? You can kind of see that. Let's see if I can even get that in a little bit more because it does, it does go all the way into the reds. But again, this is kind of half of a rainbow. And so you have this analogous color sitting side by side. And yes, I do see the woot woot sh sh showing up out there. Well, oh, thank you. All right, let's get into the cool tones. I feel like the cool tones are some of my favorites for analogous color. Well, I mean, I guess it's either or, but again, you know, you're looking at green, blue. Oh, and this one, this one goes all the way into the purples. And that's okay because we're looking at this as, you know, big categories of color, right? It's not just, you can't, you don't have to stick exactly to the color wheel, but we know here that we are on the cool side of the wheel and we are finishing up with purple. All right. See how that works. Got another one. And again, I've showed these to you before. This is another one, an older card. And again, you can see the analogous color. We are going green, blue, and purple. But here's the thing too, you don't have to explore the full color family, if you will. You could just go with a green, like a light green, a mid green, and a darker green as well, or maybe a mid green, a darker green, and then into a blue. Because if you look at how these guys all come here, you know, there's definitely a progression of color. And yes, in coming weeks, we will talk about tints and shades and what does all that mean? But I just wanted to start out with something that I personally was confident in talking about, and that is analogous color. All right, let's bring in one more card project here. Now this guy you've seen before, and again, we're gonna go back here. We're starting, we're starting with a yellow, right? And then we're, look at how, I just love the soft palette. And we're going, so this isn't true analogous because I do, I mean, and I have four colors going on, but you can still see how looking at one side of the color wheel, finishing with, oh, let's go all the way down to that pretty lavender, right? 
you can see how these colors together create this really beautiful blend. So I feel like the thing with the thing with the analogous color is if you like rainbows, you know, if you like rainbows, and let's see if I can, let's see if I can zoom up a little bit here. There we go. I'm going to bring in a few more. If you like your rainbows, just imagine that what you're going to do is you're just going to stick with one side of the rainbow and that's it. You know what I mean? You're not, you're not going to worry about uh, the whole rainbow. You're just going to stick with one side of the rainbow. And if you do that, you're pretty sure that you're going to have things that are going to work well from a color standpoint. So I hope this is helpful because the color thing is a question that I've gotten a lot of, you know, how do you, how do you spec your colors? And friends, here's what I'm telling you today. I, I literally limit myself and only have a few things. You know what I'm saying? So now we're winding down with the official part of the chat. So I think I would like to look at some of the questions that are coming up here. And I'm going to go ahead and see if I can read through some of these. Doot, doot, doot. Okay, Debbie, I'm going to pop you up. Let's see here. How do we do this? Oh, now I think. Uh, all right. I should know how to do this. Comments and reactions. And oh, add to broadcast. Okay, here we go. So Debbie asks this question. Do you have to stay in the order that is on the wheel? Or oh, let's get you up out of my little, I got a little guy up here that's in my way. There we go. We're going to bring Debbie down. Um, or could you, or let me read here. Or could you do yellow, blue, green? So here's the thing. I think you can work in whatever order you want if you are using these, right? If you're, if you're picking, you know, your, if you're picking your yellow and your green and your blue, does it make sense to work in rainbow order? Well, it does if you're doing a blend, right? It does if you're doing a blend, but if you're doing a, another project like a scrapbook page and you're working with pattern papers, I think you can mix and match them all over your design and you're still going to have this harmonious feel because the analogous colors really do work together. Does that make sense? All right, now let's see. I'm not sure why I have a little notification coming up here, but let's uh, let's close that out. All right, thanks for that question, Debbie. I appreciate it. And actually, if you guys have any other questions, oh, let me see. Uh, I'm going to read through a few more now that the timer has existed. Uh, let's see. Add to broadcast. Sarah, thanks for your question. And Sarah's asking, would you go around the end of the rainbow, like blue to purple to red? Yes. In fact, gosh, I have a project and I can't find it. I have a project where I just recently um, did do that side of the rainbow. And um, I was surprised at myself because normally I kind of stick to, you know, either the cools or, you know, the warms or whatever. Uh, but yes, you can do that as well. I'm going to go ahead and close you out. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate the question. Nancy, let's see what Nancy's question is. Is there a limit to the number of colors you can use? I'm going to say no, because let's say you're doing a rainbow, right? And I don't have a rainbow card handy in front of me. I, I Well, I have one behind me, but I'm hardwired. <laughs> so if I get up and walk away, oh, let's get that guy off. Okay. If I get up and walk away, um, we will have a problem. So uh, no, as long as it is, if you're doing a lot of color, if you work in order with a rainbow, I think you're going to have better success. All right, I'm actually gonna click down here. Thank you for that question. Uh, yes, and Simon Hurley points this out. I'm gonna add this too, because actually I just watched a video um, that Simon did the other day. How many of you all uh, subscribe to Simon's channel? If not, I think you should. The kids have been doing it longer than I have, and he's very good at it. But yes, Simon blended three inks the other day in a video that I saw, where when you get that overlap, you create that, th that third color that doesn't exist with your ink blends. And that's a really cool thing to do. And yeah. Oh, all right. I'm going to close you. Thanks, Simon. And that was actually a really great video the other day. Lisa. Lisa's got a question. Where can you get the color wheel? I'm going to link this. It's a, I actually bought a two pack and the other one I've already thrown on the floor, but I'm going to have a link below the video when I update the content with all the links to this particular uh, color wheel. And again, it has stuff on the back too. The difference between the front and the back is one is showing you the, uh, the uh, what's called the tints any color plus white and the back is showing you shades any color plus black wait did I say that right tints are when you add white shades are when you add black all right yes very exciting step 
Okay, let's get through a few more questions here. Yeah, so hopefully that answered. What is the question that came up on my message that's not, oh, Rebecca, I'm not sure what that question was. Not color related. Hmm, someone's gonna have to repost that because I did not see that question. Um, but there you go. So I don't know, is this, uh, is this little, little, little tiny snippet helpful? You know, just a little snippet. I don't want to go really deep into color because personally, I don't go really deep into color. And I think that's why when I add limits to what I'm going to work with, I have more success. Now behind me, did someone ask me a question about, um, was it the Copic marker question maybe? I have all these Copics over my shoulder. I don't do a ton of coloring at this time I, I, um, because they scare the crap out of me. They really do. I, I'm not confident with Copic markers. And I think part of it is, you know, there's a little bit of, how, how do you say, intimidation factor. <laughs> Let's get the bra done up here. Um, when it comes to Copics. And, and I think that I have to really limit myself. Does that make sense? Nah. Okay. So that said, uh, if, if this was helpful for you today, give it a thumbs up. If you give it a thumbs up, YouTube says, hey, you know what? I might share this or recommend this with, with you know, somewhere else in YouTube land. So I appreciate that. And I also want to bring on, let's see here, I want to bring on my little hashtag. So if you are out there today and you've taken this in and you think, I, I, being of sound mind and body, I'm going to make, well, I'm going to make something with analogous color. Let's see, will it focus? Yes, it will. If you do and you create something, whether it's a scrapbook page or a card project, tag me with CZ Design Chat because then I can see what you're making and it's kind of cool for me to see how people take this information and apply it to their crafting. So be sure to do that. And again, oh, here's, here's where it was. Just to remind you, we've been talking about analogous color. <laughs> that little overlay was supposed to be, yeah, okay. Um, all right, and let me see here. Helen wants to know, I'm actually gonna pop this up because I do wanna talk about this in a coming, in a coming installment. And I'm going to close out, let's close out analogous color. Let's move Helen up right under my chin. There you are. Um, yes, how to combine colors across the wheel. So we are definitely going to talk about that in upcoming, oh, sorry, that was my mic, in upcoming chats. That is where it gets more complicated. That is where, as a designer, you know how you kind of figure out what your strengths are, right? One of my strengths is drinking lots of coffee. Mm. And the other strength is keeping my projects really simple really simple to maximize the impact that I'm going to have with any given design. So one of the things that I do rely on, however, especially in scrapbooking is I look at patterned papers and then I let those papers determine my color schemes. And I think that's another thing that I'm going to look at in a future installment as well, because there are designers out there who are way better than me at choosing color that's why I don't really design pattern paper because I think it's a really fine art form. And so I will oftentimes look at pattern paper to help me determine the whole scheme. Sometimes I'll grab my color wheel and I'll try to identify what's working here. Is this complementary? Is this split complementary? Is this triadic? These are all terms we're going to talk about in future design chats. So Tiffany, what was your question? Good question. Now I'm looking back. Oh, working with color photos. <laughs> and you did notice that everything I showed you today was black and white, right? You, you caught that? Well, I actually have done some recent layouts. I've been trying to do more and more with color photos. I have a layout in the last, no, no, in the new issue of Scrapbook and Cards Today magazine. Actually, maybe all of them are color photos. I definitely have some thoughts about color photos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you my, my short answer. Here's what it is. Look at your color photo. Go like this with your eyes. Kind of blur it, right? So you're, you can kind of just see a general representation of the color. The color that stands out to you the most should be the dominant color that you begin to work with. I do this all the time. I did a layout about my husband and I squinted my eyes and I saw lots of warm colors. And so I went with reds and then picked complementary colors to go with that based on the pattern paper I had in cardstock, but that's all mumbo jumbo. It'll make more sense when I actually do it in person. So again, I want to thank you so much for joining me live today. And again, if you're catching this on replay, let me know. 
leave a comment below. I do go and read all the comments. And again, oops, um, I really appreciate you hanging in there for me. I appreciate the requests because this chat came out of someone asking me how to pick colors. And so we that's what made me <laughs> place my order on Amazon, get myself a fresh color wheel and start with the area that I feel I'm most comfortable with, which is analogous color. All right, friends. Well, I appreciate, oh, Helen, I've had you up there the whole time. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate that. And also look, look for some future chats where I'm going to do just some Q&A lives as well. Um, I love the design chat because it's very focused. I also have an idea for a design series called Missed the Mark. And I think it would be interesting to talk about the projects that I make that don't look so good and why they don't work. It's, 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 I've got notes and I'm hoping to do that as well. But again, I really appreciate you for being here. And again, hit that subscribe button. Give me a, give me a thumbs up and I will see you back here with another 10 minute design chat for crafty people soon. Hopefully, hopefully I didn't forget anything. Bye everyone.